Good morning. My name is Carl Manson. I'm the CISO for No Name Security, and I'll be the secure uh, the moderator for the security track today. Uh, Good thank morning. you so much. My name is Carl Manson. I'm the CISO for No Name Security. Pardon me. Um, uh, thank you for joining us today. So uh, as we go through the security track, we have 12 amazing speakers joining us today. Um, each of our speakers will be joining for about 20 minutes of presentation, sharing their insights, wisdom on API security, and then we'll end with about five minutes of Q&A. So um, it's a real privilege today to welcome our very first speaker, um, Duran Hema. Uh, Duran is the CEO and co-founder of L7 Defense LTD. Good morning, Duran. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Carl. Thank you for uh, the invitation to, to speak in this conference. And let me share my screen if it's all, not already. Yeah, please do. OK. OK. Excellent. The floor is yours, oh. Duran, and, uh, and uh, take it away. OK. Thank you very much. So I'm going to speak today about a topic which uh, bother us all as API security, challenge us all as API security vendors, and which is the, the, shift, the shifting process or what are the driving forces which are taking a, a, our customers, potential customers, from speaking in the language of application security into the language of API security. Before that, let me briefly introduce uh, uh, L7 Defense, a company which I'm co-founder of. So we were founded in 2015, uh, post-round day, Israeli-based uh, uh, headquarter, and we have branches in the US and UK. We're focused on the, uh, the financial market and telco and, of course, internet companies. And our product, which is uh, was awarded from uh, us uh, uh, for Sullivan is fully automated API security solution, protecting real time from wide spectrum of attacks. Briefly saying, it's a fully autonomous AI based machine learning machine, which does all of those API security missions. Okay. Now let's start from the uh, uh, problem definition, which is the SecOp challenge. We're trying all of us to, to approach the SecOp team and try to convince them, look, there is something which have lower, a, a reduce more significantly the risk than it used to be in the past. And it can be done more automated uh, uh, than you have done so far. Still, as a, 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 a guy which came from a, a exact science, everybody knows that there is some barrier between stages and this very energy need a model this comfort zone uh, starting from the team already know this product so why uh, 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 doing something else uh, we are good enough all of those uh, uh, statements that we are all used to be used to here and therefore you need to cross this chism so what we have at end if we start from the uh, uh, the main uh, uh, capabilities of Many of the API security products in the market, you can find here that everybody starts from web attacks protection, uh, and now are moving to, to BL, DL attack, data leakage attacks, and uh, uh, increasing the both uh, uh, capabilities. So this is an emerging, but still uh, something that the API security become better and better a long time. While WAF are usually a bot, a bot detection system, which are a, a complementary to WAF and now coming uh, in the package, they are somewhat restricted in their technology and their capability, uh, mostly because they are stateless machine versus the stateful machine, which are a, a, the, the API security solution. So this is where it started. Uh, and going to the different directions, one is the API assets and policy management in which uh, uh, those capabilities are not at all exist at the, uh, at the WAF now, although somewhat uh, starting to, to initiate there. API security is, is the, uh, this is a common ground for, for those solutions. And also advanced analysis capability, which again, comes from the capability to do more about your internal uh, uh, API uh, state and translate it into more and more 
uh, way of anal way of uh, uh, analyzing the, the, those requests which are coming and the reply which are out. So customer choice habit wise is here basically. While customer choice by value, as we aspire to, is here. That's the problem, the, the details of the problem definition as we face it. Now, let's see three uh, uh, scenarios. Two of them are already become common this day. One, the third one is less familiar, but still is emerging. Let's start with the uh, uh, service-based application uh, uh, security uh, that I believe everyone is familiar with. So what is actually when the web services and the business logic services are an emerging a, a auto scaling and all of those container words, you find yourself in an ever growing attack surface, a, a, which is mostly become less, less control a long time. And from, from various reasons, those are the two major, but there are also others. You need more control and you need more transparency and you need more a, a, on those assets, and you need something that to, will be now more API centric. A, you need also to take care more about both and user based attacks, which are now both considered as BL attacks, business logic attacks. So you need something which is more unified and solid around those type of problem. While the WAF usually, as we remember from the previous table, missing those capabilities. So. This trend which we face now in the industry, we see that those questions arise a long time to multiple type of customers and are well connected to the attack surface growth. Second scenario, which become even more a, a, a frightened these days is the third party attacks. And FinTech banks a, a interaction is usually the best a, a, the best example for, for such, in which you have, this is the normally a WAF or API discussion that was from the previous slide, but this one is a new. You need now to protect web services from partners. Now, the story here about partners is that you're sessionless and you don't have the source IP and client side solution are just useless. So you're facing now post login attacks. You need much more context to, 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 to be able to do something and not to fail into the false positive problems. And of course, the major threat is that you lost all of your or major part of your data and sometimes uh, even, more, even worse than that through those trusted partners channels. So this is a very, a, 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 I, say, I, I would say context matter. I call it context matter because everything now here is becoming context to a problem. So WAF cannot deal with that anymore. Back to this one, it's a services problem, generally speaking. Now it's more contextual problem. And the third one, which is, as we speak, is growing fast in the market uh, uh, adaptation. It's the Kubernetes, uh, uh, the Kubernetes uh, uh, architecture, which is driving to the market crazy now because basically you can be hit everywhere in those nodes, which are somehow managed by those magic Kubernetes uh, uh, clusters, and you've got various uh, uh, layers of virtualiz virtualization there. You need to be able, and we call the time to damage, TDT, you need, you have here now an accelerating time to damage. Any internal API can at some point become an external one without anyone notice really, because the developer decides so. And the numbers are, are changing from sometimes from 10 to 1000 in, in a few minutes or so, so of those uh, nodes. So you need something which is very dynamic is node based now, and you need that the analytic uh, uh, part to be out of this box, of course, and to be scaled by itself. So you need here to have highly scalable architecture, which break any rule of the uh, current WAF by, by far. And you need also all of those advanced analysis 
to be taken because now you need a lot of correlation to, to happen here. And of course, you need the full DPI. So basically, this is what you got, a major problem which is emerging. Now, what is next for us as vendors to reach into more and more of the addressable market as we see that? After having those, uh, uh, this uh, uh, scenario at hand in which we can come to us and say, look, you're in a great uh, risk now, which is growing because all of those factors which are emerging now. So we need more inline uh, in active enforcement installation to demonstrate our capabilities, of course, and this is a growing demand now. Uh, we need to go to elsewhere, places which the WAP wasn't there. We need more functional use cases which were unfamiliar till now. I just show one of those, up to the, or two of those basically, uh, an up-to-date architecture that the second one. We need also to support all of those exotic stuff which now become mainstream fast. Those are the uh, major uh, need to, to, to be done. And we need also to, to educate the market basically that can be done now, because sometimes when you come customer, it cannot be done. You need to go to all of those old stuff because nobody can deal with that. Okay, we can. Also, channels wise, we need to train the channels that there is a value that can be added on top of the application security. And we need more presence in the marketplace. We're in emerging vendors, and it seems to be a, a major take here. One slide which I took from a totally different story, which is the expansion, expansion of the AI market in banking. And I saw those risk management and compliance and security. And I asked myself, would API security would be part of this? a party of growing from, you know, almost zero to very large number in a very short time because of the need to uh, uh, adapt fast AI. And, and AI is, is the tool that everyone are using the API security market to, to generate their benefit. Thank you very much and feel free to contact me when needed. Thank you, Doran. Um, a fantastic presentation. Um, one of the first things that I'd like to uh, double click on uh, is you, you have an illustration of the of the the, sort of the differences between a web application firewall uh, and API security. So mm -hmm. um, do you envision a future state in which the web application firewall becomes obsolete or, or is it do you still envision it as complementary to what we would do okay. on the API side? Okay, this, this is partially political, partially a technological uh, answer. For, and, and we see that, uh, of course, on a daily basis in the market. Let's put it that way. Sometimes, or many times, you find that WAFs are bundled with a load balancer, for instance. In such a case, a, a customers and major enterprise put a lot of effort to put many scripts on those machines. And those become part of the organization. So you need to, to have here a sort of a, a start as complementary solution in those, in those cases and grow confidence at customer yard to, that you will be able to, to at, the, at the right time to, you know, somebody will need to choose. Mm -hmm. don't, don't push that. They, they are ready now to take it as a complementary solution in those cases. There are other use cases which no solution exists at all. In such case, you can definitely compete at such. I just came today from one of those. So uh, uh, I'm totally aware about those two capabilities to, to enter product to the market. And and you mentioned the, the, the idea, of course, of, of market education. Um, so mm -hmm. what kind of, uh, you know, aside from the messaging that you've shared with us today, what resonates with teams um, in terms of, of, of understanding um, the, the, the new chessboard uh, of API security uh, and, and who are the primary advocates and objectors to the, to the, to the, um, to the concepts that you've shared with us? Okay. Okay. Uh, I would say that this is chase after very dynamic, uh, 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 something that you cannot hold the hand because sometimes you find yourself, let's, let's put it that way. Two years ago, everyone were against API security. Now you can find islands of 
uh, those which are no, in, no, in no mean would like to take it. So I would say that the mass have shifted from to, to, to be aware about the possibility to enter such solution to the organization. It doesn't really uh, directly mean that they are going to do that now, but they're aware about the, this capability and they are discussing it internally. So statistically, a, 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 ob, a observation is that numbers of objection were reduced massively. Still, you can find those in, in organization where API security teams are very strong and very uh, uh, sure about their capability to do anything with those machines. Uh, at the executive level, you need to identify that you put a lot of money on, you know, on a team instead of licensing product, which might do it much better and much more automated. So those are the consideration of the different levels. Um, so can I can I take you into a, maybe a different tangent for a moment? Um, you have a, a slide that illustrates the the channel to the, the trusted partner, that third party uh, service. Um, and I, and I've asked this I'm, I'm asked this fairly regularly. Uh, how do we evaluate our third parties like in a due diligence phase? What should we be asking our third parties uh, for them to demonstrate uh, on their side that they're they're you know, they're, they're carrying their weight of this mm -hmm. API security equation? First of all, I believe that all major organizations have their already the list, you know, the checklist that they are, uh, 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 they are, they are uh, have ISO on and all of that uh, uh, regulation stuff in place. It won't assist you uh, uh, in ma in many times, but at least you know that there is some baseline that this organization is working somehow ordered in some in some manner order. Now, on top of that. Uh, I would say that uh, it's sometimes the size of the of the uh, team of the security team, team which matters. If you got only one CISO and you got major organization, you may ask yourself why. That's that's a very a very easy to observe uh, situation usually. On the contrary, if you got too many of those, you may also ask why they have so many of those and. You know, it, it says something also about the character of the protection manner. You need some balance in those. You need to see that they are dynamic. They are accepting uh, new uh, capabilities, where they buy the last tool, what type of last tool they bought. Those type of information might give you a different perspective than just analyzing their regulation uh, capability. Um, and just a, a reminder for everybody in the audience, that we, we, we have an open channel for, for Q&A. Um, uh, in the in the um, in the interface, so please continue with with questions, and and uh, of course we'll pass along to 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 Doran anything that we don't get to um, here as part of this this segment. Um, one one you know, final area I'd like to to, to ask you: Can you um, can you expand upon the the Kubernetes is magic comment? And so mm -hmm. like Kubernetes in particular, how how does it change the how does it change the chessboard uh, from from a, a WAF gateway? protections perspective so as you see in the slide uh, uh, you know th those tools are here usually on the on the interface but as the interface is vanishing because you know it can come from unexpected places now the traffic to the outside world and nobody can stop that basically all of the all of the all of your trouble will come from the inside now you cannot you cannot see inside outside now the 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 WAFs were made for interface they were not made to to become part of your game they're just sitting between you and the world now I think that this is going to break totally break the situation that's my belief um yeah and one you know one one's uh, additional question. Uh, how, how about load balancing then at that workload level when we take deal with like Istio, uh, Linkerd? Um, uh, is, there, is there a difference in the way we should, we should be thinking about the role of a load balancer as it, as it pertains to new workload types? Uh, I would say that load balancer are, are playing a major role currently in all of the architecture that you might have, even sometimes in different places with the gateways, etc. Uh, they're interesting because they're easy to, to uh, integrate with, usually. That's my take on that. If, you, if, if the integration with the gateway was easiest with the load balancer, they might win a much larger uh, uh, part of the market. 
if you go to to standard uh, load balancer, it's it's a matter of days to to, to establish a, a connection in between parties. Mm -hmm. So it might be the the difference between taking the market and losing the market. Sure. So can you um, can you give advice to to organizations who are joining us today? Um, you know, as they as they as they they hear the the uh, the, ch the changing landscape of API security. What would you suggest is a, is, a, is a next step that that most organizations, if they haven't already taken it, that would be the first the first step to take in a journey. I would say uh, that first of all, they need to understand that they are in a, in a problem here. If they if there is no awareness about that, and I I, I visited few organizations that awareness was wasn't there. While others, the, 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 it was totally in, in, in as part of the organization. So different organization has different awareness about the situation. If you got awareness, try to articulate your use cases, the, the, the major ones, which you, you're, you, may, you think are going to be your major threat, and it's easy to identify those. If you're a... a, a Fintechs is usually coming either from the customer side or from the interaction with the bank side. So, so you you're playing in those in those uh, uh, games. If you're in telco, it's usually the scale. You need to scale your your uh, acti protection activity in a mass uh, while doing your uh, uh, transformation to the cloud. Those are typical situations. So, you need to articulate pretty good your situation where the risk is going to come, and try to answer that uh, requirement as much as possible with discussion with vendors. It's make it easier to both sides to understand the situation. Um, final final question, this is the, um, maybe this is the, the hardest one, which would be what, what what remains unsolved in mind in terms of API security? Or what do you, what would you project perhaps a year from now we'll be talking about uh, in, in the API security looking forward? First of all, I would say that uh, uh, Let's go to the slide, you know, why, why, why uh, predicting with no data. Uh, as I see, the API assets and policy are quite emerging and, and filled with uh, every vendor trying to, to fill them and do it, doing more on that. Advanced analysis capabilities is something which is emerging. I would say, uh, especially the, the campaign analysis, which is basically not there yet for, for anyone, but the, everyone here are looking for this direction because when you're looking at the risk, the, the word risk should become your, your, major, uh, uh, your major observation in the organization. Uh, uh, if I wasn't clear, so you need to, to uh, translate your discussion from attacks to risk, risk management. And I think risk management is the word that is missing from this presentation here. Uh, and it's going to be here next year. That's my belief. Uh, uh, fantastic. Um, I look forward to that presentation next year on, uh, on campaigns. Thank you very much. Um, so for last, uh, last, uh, can you leave, uh, leave folks in the audience with a, um, a, a recommendation to contact you or your company uh, if they have uh, yeah, no further questions you want to talk more? Here, here's the slide. Okay. Perfect. Um, uh, Doran, it's been a, it's been a pleasure having you with us this morning. Um, thank you for, so much for joining. And